So welcome to PCR TV at Euro PCR uh, 2019. My name is Nicolas Dumonte. I'm an interventional cardiologist in Toulouse, France. And uh, I'm with Maurizio Taramasso, who is a cardiac surgeon in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. We're here to discuss about uh, um, what we need as physicians and surgeons to know about uh, uh, modern tricuspid interventions. Um, Maurizio, my first question to you uh, would be um, uh, around the topic of patient selection uh, regarding this, uh, uh, this valve disease that is tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, as you know, we are still at the beginning of this, uh, the knowledge in this field, so intervention on tricuspid valve, but we can use some of the knowledge that we uh, accumulated in the past year from, from the surgical field to apply to patient selection also for intervention. Let's say that the ideal candidate, in my opinion, is a patient, of course, with severe or moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation, which is not too advanced in the history of the disease. So right ventricle should be still okay. I think that some kind of mild right ventricular dysfunction is still okay. But of course, if we think to give this kind of treatment in a patient with really end-stage right ventricular failure, then it's gonna end up with a most likely in a futile procedure. So I think the evaluation of the right ventricle is really crucial, as well as the evaluation of the pulmonary hypertension. In presence of severe pulmonary hypertension, most likely this kind of procedure are gonna be unsuccessful. This from a clinical standpoint. And then of course we have some <coughs> selection criteria regarding the anatomy. We are still learning uh, which is the better anatomy to be treated for different kind of devices. But of course, clinical and anatomy are the two parameters that we have to take into account uh, before offering this kind of procedure to the patient. Thank you, Maritza. It's very clear. And uh, maybe one thing also we, we, can, uh, we can discuss is about um, for the patient's perspective and the referring physicians uh, to centers who are able to, to do such uh, transcatheter tricuspid interventions, what um, the patient and the physician has uh, to expect as an outcome uh, regarding uh, quality of life improvements or other clinical on, uh, outcomes uh, after such interventions? Yeah, of course, uh, what we can say to our referee physician is that overall this procedure, despite they are still at the beginning of the, let's say, of the clinical application, they are pretty safe, even in, let's say, a uh, population that conventionally is a high-risk population. So we can say that this is pretty safe. From an efficacy standpoint, I think that the target of this procedure, at least at this stage, is to improve symptoms and quality of life. And there are some initial data uh, showing us that uh, this is achieved if we reduce TR. So, of course, uh, now we have some devices that are probably suboptimal in abolish TR and in reducing TR of more than one or two degree but there is quite a clear correlation. This makes sense that the more we are able to reduce TR, the more we, are really, we will be able to, to improve clinical outcome. So I think our final target should be reduce TR, so it's an anatomical target that will translate in a clinical target. But at this stage, our target is to improve symptoms of quality of life and hopefully survival, but this information actually we don't, know. We don't have it at the moment. Okay, thanks. Um, second point I would like to discuss with you is imaging. Uh, not only imaging for, as you mentioned, uh, pre-procedural uh, <coughs> assessment for diagnosis of severity of a TR, because this is quite conventional and usual for most of the cardiologists, but imaging uh, um, pointing towards the, the feasibility and the selection of patients for those transcatheter therapy and also for intra-procedural guidance. So of course, the. Uh, gold standard method to select patient and also then to guide uh, the procedure is echocardiography, both transthoracic and transesophageal echocardiography. Mm -hmm. uh, we can not only measure the annulus, measure the grade of tethering and the severity of TR, uh, we can also um, somehow assess right ventricular function and this has to be coupled with some invasive and hemodynamical measurement like uh, right heart catheterization. Mm -hmm. And then in planning the procedure also CT scan uh, plays a major role for most of the devices in order to, to measure carefully the annular dimension, the distance between the annulus and the right coronary artery, which is crucial for some annuloplasty devices. Regarding intraprocedural guidance, the most used method is transesophageal echo. This is quite challenging, but 
evolving. So since we started with this procedure, I would say that the quality of our intraprocedural guidance improved a lot. And the problem is that uh, the tricuspid valve is the most anterior valve in our body. So if we look at the valve from our esophagus, in some patients, the quality of our imaging could be, could be suboptimal. Uh, therefore, imaging is challenging. Sometimes we have to uh, add on transesophageal echo on top some transthoracic echo guidance. Sometimes also ICE is helpful, especially to assess the annulus. Uh, ICE is intracardiac echography. Exactly. Yeah. Intracardiac echocardiography. And the new devices that will allow us to perform intracardiac echocardiography with tridimensional reconstruction will probably improve a lot and make this kind of procedure much, much more easy and reproducible. Thank you. And last, uh, I, I think um, maybe as an expert on this field and uh, having already uh, um, implanted the several devices that are available, maybe you could give us um, an overview of what are the therapeutic options available in, in, this, uh, in this area. And there are different options and basically we can divide them according to the therapeutic target. So we have devices addressing annular dilatation mainly, so annuloplasty devices some of them direct, some of them indirect. Then we have some leaflet or coaptation devices addressing leaflet coaptation. And then we have also some device to replace the valve, either in orthotopic position, like, like we do normally in surgery, or in uh, heterotopic position, like uh, caval implantation in order to reduce the backflow um, in, the, in the venous system. So we have different devices. We know from preliminary data that uh, um, we can address tricuspid regurgitation with different approaches. So feasibility has been proved or is under evaluation for different devices. Of course, some of them are more advanced in their application, so we have more information. Some of them are really at the beginning. Uh, the direction that we have to work with to at the moment is uh, to assess the uh, efficacy of these devices. So to check and to prove which device works better in which anatomy. We have different approach. We know that all of them more or less are feasible. They are safe, but the missing information at the moment is which kind of benefit we can give to the patient and in which anatomy, which should be the first choice device. Okay, thank you, Maurizio. I think uh, this was really clear and uh, we can summarize this as follows. There is um, um, clearly an, uh, an, um, a very uh, important clinical need for patients uh, to have a transcatheter treatment for tri tricuspid severe symptomatic regurgitation. Uh, they have to expect an improvement in uh, their quality of life rather than uh, uh, um, prolonged survival or other outcomes that we have seen in other transcatheter therapies like TAVI, for example. Um, the screening and the guidance is crucial and it's done by a multimodality imaging as you, as you summarized. And uh, we know and we understand from your input that we are now at the, at the, at the period that we have already several therapeutic options uh, that, uh, that can uh, um, serve uh, and that can be used for our patients' benefits, uh, um, reaching such, uh, such uh, objectives of reducing the, t the transcatheter and the tricuspid regurgitation, and uh, by this way improving their quality of life, improving their symptoms. Thank you, Maurizio. Thank you, Nicolas. Thank you.